Then we're checking the support rules for the installation. Here we have the com computer domain controller. That's going to give us an error here in just a moment. What that is, is it's going to give us an error because we're installing SQL Server on the same Windows environment that's hosted Active Directory. So that's, as I, as I said before, that's kind of a big no-no, but for demonstration purposes, we're just going to ignore it. The uh, warning, in short, so you can take a look at it, is essentially that uh, SQL Server is being installed on a domain controller is not recommended. Windows Firewall, we'll come back to that here in a bit. Basically, we've got Windows Firewall on, we're blocking all the ports, so we need to open up the port for SQL Server. Let's do the full feature, or let's do an, a selection of the features we want to install. That way you can take a look at those. So as I mentioned before, we want to install the four major components of the database engine, analysis services, integration services, and reporting services. Everything else we're virtually going to ignore. And let's go select those four major ones right now. Replication. Uh, we don't concern ourselves with full text search, not concerned about that. Data quality services, not concerned about that. I think we can ignore those for these purposes. And certainly, again, beyond the scope of this this tutorial. The other things that we'd like to install is the management tools and the SQL Server data tools. The SQL Server data tools and management tools will give us two major parts that we need, and that is SQL Server Management Studio, which will allow us to go in and look at the databases, uh, look at analysis services, and also look at integration services. We want to have the SQL Server data tools for generating integration service, services packages. That will enable us to do a little development against SQL Server. Perfectly fine with that. Let's uh, continue on. All right, we did a quick check on uh, prior to the installation, everything should check out just fine there. This is the instance for which we're going to install. Keep in mind, SQL Server can be installed multiple times on one environment, and the default instance is MS SQL Server. We're going to continue with that. However, if we wanted to, if that was already installed, we could create a new instance and name it something to the effect of, uh, let's do demo. If I could type instance, there we go, or like what we are going to do, we're just going to stick with the default of MS SQL Server. This comes back to our service accounts we created earlier. This is where we want to enter those. Browse out. This one here I called SQL Agent SVC. We have the database engine. It's SQL DB SVC. Analysis Services, browse out for that. I believe we call that SSAS SVC. Reporting Services, SSRS SVC. Integration Services, SSIS SVC, alright great, the browser service we're not going to concern ourselves with, uh, we're not even going to turn that on for at the moment. We want the, the agent will leave as manual, the database engine should always be automatic, analysis services, if we intend to use it or not intend to use it, we should decide on that. Uh, since this is for demonstration, 
or maybe even perhaps if this is a development environment, you might want to disable that, and then when you need it, you'll turn that service on. Same thing with the reporting services. I'm going to disable that, and then whenever the time comes up, when whenever it's needed, then I'll turn it on. The reason I'm doing that is just basically saving resources, so that way I'm not bogging down the system, so that way I could perform other actions. Integration services, I'm going to disable that as well. So essentially right now I've installed these components and what I'm doing is strictly making this a database server.